a wonderful part of my life because it taught me the value of hard work and, and it taught me the value of a dollar. My mother went to work, she made $4,800 a year and that's what we lived on. She couldn't afford to buy my clothes, she couldn't afford to buy my glasses or, or give me money to buy lunch at school and I had to do it myself so I got job babysitting. Now this, this is something. Um, I made 50 cents an hour. <laughs> That's what babysitting went for at that time, and I was lucky to get those jobs. And I uh, spent half of it, and then I saved half of it. I saved for three years to buy a pair of contact lenses. And um, at that time, they were hard lenses. None of you even know what that is. Contact lenses. Oh, they were huge, and they felt like you just put sand burrs in your eyes, and they were awful. And I went out on a bike for a ride, and I was riding on a gravel road, and all of a sudden the wind came, and this contact lens flew out of my eye. And I thought I was going to die. I mean, three years I'd saved for these things. I looked and looked and looked, could not find it, because of course I was blind, you know, the thing was on. So I went home to get my mother. She came out with me. We got on our hands and knees in this gravel road, and the sun glinted. We prayed. The sun glinted, and we found this contact lens, went home, cleaned it off, put it back in my eye. Why did I tell you that story? I told you that story because it was so significant to me that I had worked and saved and put away for three years to obtain something I really wanted to have. I was so grateful to finally get it back. I know what it's like to go through something like that. My husband and I put ourselves through college, I drove school buses, did whatever it took, got through college, he did too. We put ourselves through our, our master's programs, doctorate programs, postdoctorate programs. And what I discovered is that a person can make it in this greatest of all nations if you practice the personal characteristics that lead to success. That's part of our story. It's part of who we are. And America has proved itself for 234, almost 235 years, to be the greatest force for good in the history of mankind. In 5,000 years of recorded human history, you will not find another nation that has been a greater force for good than the United States in our brief history. We are the indispensable nation of the world. That isn't just a phrase. We are the indispensable great nation of the world. Imagine if the United States wasn't here in the world right now. Who would be the nation that would stop the contagion of Al-Qaeda? Who would be that nation? China? Who would be? There was an article that came out yesterday that talked about how now Iran very likely has been delivered nuclear warheads or, and has potentially the capability within 10 weeks' time of being at that level. What nation would stop them other than the United States? What has President Obama shown us in his leadership with dealing with the forces of the so-called Arab Spring uprising. His foreign policy has been to lead from behind. Have you heard that? His policy is to lead from behind. America's identity is not a nation that leads from behind. We lead from the front. That's right. That's what we do. Some people are saying that our problems are 10 years down the road, 25 years down the road. I'm here to tell you, our problems are right now. They've got to be solved right now. One of the biggest issues that we're dealing with right now, I was at the White House yesterday with President Obama, and one of our biggest problems that we have to deal with is the debt ceiling, raising the debt ceiling. What does this mean for you? We are now currently over $14 trillion in debt. That's a that's an enormous amount of money, so large it's even hard to fully quantify for your benefit what this is going to mean. But a baby born today is, has at least $45,000 of debt on their shoulder that they have to pay back. What it means for you as young people is a reduced standard of living because someone has to pay this back. Someone has to pay the interest. If you go out and buy a new boat, you have to pay, you have to pay it back. You have to pay the interest on that loan that you took out. That's where you come in. Because if we raise the debt ceiling, that gives the government the authority to borrow an additional 2.4 trillion. Rather than being something over 14 trillion in debt, we would be well over 16 trillion, going on 17 trillion in debt. That would only take us through the next 12 months. Maybe, as bad as the economy is going, it may not even go 
hold that long. That means nothing will change other than the interest on the debt will take up even a greater share of the revenue <coughs> you take in and will be in worse trouble. So kicking the can down the road, which President Obama said is his policy, we asked him not once, not twice, but three times, Mr. President, what is your plan regarding Medicare and overhaul that we need on Medicare? He doesn't have one. He has no intention of coming up with a plan. Why? Because he leaves her behind. And so what we need to do, quite frankly, is address this problem because otherwise, I'm a federal tax litigation attorney. My husband and I ultimately started our own successful company. We own two clinics. We employ 50 people. We have five biological children, some of which are your age, and we've raised 23 foster children in our, in our home. So I am the old woman in the shoe. Just <laughs> five years of age. But we started our business. It's a successful company, and I'm a tax lawyer. From my work as a tax lawyer, this is what I know to be true, and I think this is a very conservative number. When you are in your peak earning years, you at current levels of spending and at current known demographics of the number of old people like me that we have and young people like you that have already been born, you are looking at 75% of your income subject to taxation. Now, let's say you make $100,000 a year. That sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? $100,000 a year, that's your income. Imagine you'd have to live on $25,000. You can't even do iTunes downloads on that. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so do you want that to be your future, or would you rather live on 75% of what you make? That's the choice that we're facing. Let me tell you one more reason, and I'll let you get back to your food, but let me tell you one more reason why this is extraordinarily, profoundly important. There's a great president, Ronald Reagan, who served in the 1980s. One thing that Ronald Reagan understood was this. If we were going to be the military powerhouse of the nation and of the world, we would have to have a strong economy, and we would have to enjoy prosperity in order to be able to maintain peace through strength. One thing we have seen, if you look at the Drudge Report, for instance, today, or if you look at any of the media that's out there, the numbers, the headlines are saying that our, the economy metrics are horrific. They are horrific. If we don't have a vibrant economy, there is no possible way to be the leading nation of the world militarily. It does not happen. The economy that's growing is China. What is China doing? They are focusing on becoming the preeminent superpower of the world, as is Iran. As there is, if there, when there is a vacuum in the world, other rogue nations will rise up, and they are. Do you see why I say to you today, America has been historically the greatest force for good in the history of the world, and we are that indispensable nation that must lead from the front and not from behind. So this is our moment, and this is the time for you to be involved through all of the tremendous speakers that you'll hear at the Collegians with Equal Forum. You're privileged today. You're privileged to be in America, an American. You are privileged to be here and hear this material. Take it in. We are at a historic time, and it's you that we are looking for to go back home, spread the word, start local chapters in your area, and make sure that you are part of the solution. This didn't happen by accident that we got to be the nation that we are. We won't maintain this preeminence even for 10 years years. That's how quickly the demise can come. We won't maintain this preeminence even <coughs> for 10 years if we don't stand strong now. The positive is that our nation is a can-do nation with a can-do spirit and with the Americans' sense of being the survivors and being on top, we will do this, but we must embrace it with everything that is within us and work toward that positive solution. So I thank you for allowing me to be here today. Enjoy your lunch and have a wonderful